All right. Good morning. This is the morning update. And the very first thing I want to do is talk about what it is we're going to do. And uh, I want the format of these live streams to be the morning updates to be fairly consistent. And here's what we do during the update. I'm going to provide you with an update of what I did the previous day. And I'm going to talk about uh, what the plan is for today. And then I'm going to address any questions that come up either as a comments on the previous videos or uh, during the in the discussion. Because uh, I'm here. Because Kim's here to help with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the purpose for these uh, is to provide regular updates on the status of the mill project for those who are interested. And uh, I, I would say equally important, it's accountability for me to make sure that stuff gets done. And so with that, I'll just jump right in and talk about what I got done yesterday. So the mill, uh, I'm at the point where I have completed essentially chapter one, uh, chap no, it's not chapter one, what is it? It's chapter two, chapter two stuff uh, on the mill. And the next, uh, and, and I guess just to kind of summarize what I did yesterday, scraped the surface of the bed and went out and bought some of these fasteners. I'm fortunate that there's a, a nice place nearby with all kind of weird fasteners. Uh, Kenneth Lilly Company is the name of the company, but they're just here local, and they stock all they they distribute uh, all kind of weird uh, fasteners. These are six millimeter, eighty two degree pitch uh, flathead machine screws, and picked up a bunch of those. Got a countersink uh, that uh, has six flutes, so less chatter on the holes uh, where they're countersink countersunk. Uh, finished up mounting this, did a little bit of scraping. I have not scraped the surface of the bedways flat yet. Uh, I probably won't do that today. Um, and then I, the other thing that I did was I started sanding down the headstand just on the 12 inch disc sander. And this gets it pretty flat. I'll put it over on the surface plate today uh, after I finish getting this smooth. I will sand this down using sandpaper on the surface plate as well as the front pads here. This is where the vertical ways mount. Then I will scrape the vertical ways in. I will mount the vertical ways and if I have enough time I will scrape the bottom of the headstand and mount it. I think that's a, probably a little bit aggressive uh, for one day but we'll see how it goes. That's how you are though. You go, well, good you set to, aggressive goals for yourself I, most of the time. I do. I do. <laughs> aggressive goals. Okay, so question from Emil. Is it possible to use aluminum or HRS that you scrape if you can't get your hands on CRS? Possibly. Uh, uh, so aluminum I wouldn't recommend for bearing surfaces. Uh, well, I guess I guess I use it throughout the project for bearing surfaces because it's it's integral to the castings. Uh, my my thought is, you probably could get by with hot rolled steel, but the point of cold rolled steel is its dimensional tolerances. Like it's a fairly accurate material, so you don't have to do a lot of scraping or filing to get it straight and flat. It's already pretty close. Um, and especially whenever you couple it with like scraping the bed flat or the aluminum part flat, you can kind of get it real close with a minimal amount of effort. Yeah, if you don't have cold rolled steel, I, I think it's going to have like 10x the effort that would be required for the project. Um, the... Uh, I guess I did have a comment yesterday that I wanted to address, um, and that was uh, by Alan Barnes. He was uh, kind of concerned that maybe th this format of update morning updates means there won't be build videos associated with this project, and that's not my intention. 
my intention is to do build videos very similarly to what I have been doing, um, but I want to prioritize actually completing the mill, and that way it doesn't uh, th those build videos don't stretch out over months and months and months and months and years. Mm -hmm. um, I think the shaper took over a year to complete, uh, and it, I, don't, I really don't think it should have. I well, mean, I other than life going on, yeah, but uh, like, I think the backstory is you know. Um, Bob sent you all the pieces, which was right. awesome. Right. And you're like, I really want to get this done, I want to get it done. in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we had a discussion about like what would make that possible. And we were like, you know, we should take advantage of Facebook. I mean, not Facebook, but YouTube Live. Yeah. Um, each morning so that you can sort of document the progress and then, um, you know, be able to update and make regular videos out of all that stuff instead of people having to wait until you finish right. the video. And and my my only concern with doing this is I it's not the kind of content I would like to consume on YouTube. Um, uh, so I imagine there are people in the audience who uh, won't find value in these videos, and you know, and that's fine. You know, don't, don't uh, if you don't like them, <laughs> just wait for the build videos to come out. They'll 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 be coming out. Uh, you know, and in the meantime, what I'll do to help you save time, I. The thumbnails down in the bottom right, it'll have a little orange update uh, or morning, something like that, uh, with the logo. And uh, in the description, I'll put uh, morning up front. So that way you know this is kind of this format of live updates, daily updates, that you could see the progress coming along on the mill and you could uh, help me stay accountable. And uh, that's really the, the primary purpose. And if you have a question, just pop in and ask it. But uh, I think that's that's pretty much. I like the opportunity for you yeah. to get like live feedback as you work on it, though. Too. Yeah, and live feedback. I mean? That's true. Like like the Zamic uh, discussion. I mean, I think that folks have suggested that before, and fo fortunately, they're consistent and they remind me that hey, you need to use a better material. You need to use a better material. And so when it comes time to cast it, I will use a better material. And that's the kind of thing that I I will uh, benefit greatly in the project. Will benefit greatly from uh, during the course of building this mill. So Tracker Row says, wouldn't it be easier to weld steel together in the same configuration? Hmm. Possibly. Um, yeah, I, I guess you might have some movement with if you weld it, if you're a good welder. <laughs> So that's maybe that's why I go in with casting. I, I don't know. Yeah, really, um, really. I guess I don't. I don't have enough um, perspective to be able to say that that wouldn't work or that this is better uh, and why. I mean, I have built a couple of these machines, so this one will be better than either one of the previous two that I've made. Um, even even just things like like knowing to put it on the surface plate, get it flat before like really, really flat using the sandpaper method before you start scraping. I mean, it took me about two hours to scrape the top of this um, mill bed. I think the lathe probably was eight plus hours to scrape that. I mean, there's a lot more surface, and I think maybe Gangri uh, iterated on his design and improved it for the milling machine. There's, there's things I noticed like the overhang here on the bedways is quite a bit more than on the lathe. Uh, the feet do not have that little raised boss in the middle that goes inside of the casting. It's kind of unnecessary, and I, he eliminated it in this. So I think he's making improvements on his design, um, and really I'm I'm kind of following the designs in the book. But you do make your own adjustments as necessary, right? Yeah, I mean, there's some things that I, I make adjustments I mean uh, I use all metric fasteners so that's that's one difference um, uh, design differences I mean there's things I, I definitely want to go back and redo on the lathe but uh, that's a passion project but that well no it's, it's gonna become necessary I think probably oh, next okay. week I'm gonna have to actually I'm gonna have to switch focus to the lathe so that I can make stuff for the mill um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. I was just kind of planning that out last night, and I think that's going to happen next week. So. Any other questions you have to address? No, no other questions that I need to address. Anything okay, else we on don't the have chat? any in the live. Right okay. Now, so. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's it. And uh, 
Thanks for joining me for the morning update. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, wait. Somebody just threw one up. Oh. oh. What happened to cast iron? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, it's still going to happen. I just... <laughs> I just... Uh, you were handed. Bob sent all me all of these castings, <laughs> and I got I got got them sitting on sitting on my bench. So clearly, I couldn't possibly make a cast iron foundry until I've addressed this mill <laughs> casting uh, thing that I've got sitting here. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.